With all the improvements that I've done to my lathe, it's time that I take the controls, bring them all together into one package. So the machine's a little easier to use and hopefully a little bit safer. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is the switch that my lathe came with. It's just a simple three position switch and that's it. Forward, off, and reverse. There was no speed controls because it was an AC motor with no speed adjustment. There was no emergency stop. There was no master power. There wasn't anything other than the fact that it was forward, reverse, and off. This machine also came without the ability to thread or power feed, and because of ELS, I have now added that feature. When I'm threading, I actually use the forward and reverse switch as my main controller to determine what is happening in the threading process. And I really would prefer that forward be on this side and reverse be on this side because I want to turn the switch in the direction that the carriage is going to move. If you look at this, this is a massive switch. And I did that because this is my direction switch for the DC side. And that is where the highest amperage draw is and where you need the biggest contacts. This is a triple pole double throw switch. The third pole is actually going to be tied into the power it is going to control the relay that actuates my automatic braking system for this machine. But that is a different video. Now the reason that it's so important that the new direction switch is such a high amperage unit is because using a switch that is not up to the task won't typically cause problems right away, but it will shorten the life of the switch. So let me see if I can show you what's going on with this switch. It was one of the better switches that I could find at the time. I've found a better replacement since then, but it's still not as good as the big switch that is eventually going to be located here. So let's say I'm threading and we turn this on and everything spins like it's supposed to. So I go ahead and I make my cut. I turn it to the off position. I wind out. I go the other direction. Everything works the way it's supposed to. That's great. We turn it off, we wind back in. The problem that I'm having is sometimes when I go to use the switch, it does not engage. So I'll flip it to the on position either direction and it won't come on. And that's because the contacts inside are starting to break down. Something that I added as an upgrade to the ELS on my machine is this autonomous stepper controller. The ELS comes with the ability to power feed, but that power feed is totally dependent on what the spindle is doing. And I wanted to have autonomous power feed controls so that I could start it, stop it, change the speed, that kind of thing. To resolve that issue, I purchased this autonomous stepper controller. It used to have two buttons, one here and one here, making it a little bit hard to mount. So I added these pigtails going to these switches there's a whole video on that project. And at the time, I just put it on a simple little L bracket as a quick and dirty mount to be able to use it. We're gonna mount this in this box to keep chips from potentially getting into the electrical components and so that everything is enclosed and safe from the harsh work environment of the shop. I'm also gonna relocate the speed control and the master power switch that is currently in the column of the lathe into this box. When I upgraded to a treadmill motor so that I had variable speed, I added these two dials that allow me to have fine speed control and coarse speed control. I added a master power switch that has illumination, which is really nice because if you turn the direction switch to the neutral position, the system is technically still powered up even though the motor is not spinning. So having that light there is an advantage. And then I have the direction switch. Now three of the four of these components are going to get mounted up in the new control box. The direction switch is going to be replaced with a heavy duty direction switch that will actually live in this location. And then we're gonna add an emergency stop switch. 
This is all pretty straightforward. The only thing that was a little bit of a challenge was figuring out how to get this switch apart to be able to mount it in the box. And I found out that there is a release right here. If you take the switch and you put a screwdriver in there, you can pull this back and that allows you to pop this out. And now we have the ability to drill your hole, slide this piece into the hole, mount it down, and then reattach the switching mechanism. Overall, it should be fairly easy. All I have to do is cut some holes in this lid, uh, drill a few holes in the body here, add grommets, run wiring through, and we will be set to go. So this is how I ended up wiring all this up. This is the master power coming in from the wall, and it's going to go to my switch. Obviously, I always preach about using the green wires, making sure everything's grounded. This is going to connect to this. If this was a metal box, I actually would have tied this wire and this wire into the box so that the box itself was grounded. And then this is the power out that goes to the SCR voltage controller power supply. And then I also have this little thin wire right here, which is coming from my potentiometers and going to the SCR voltage controller for speed control. So let's take a peek at this. So this is my master power. This is where power is coming in. Now, you may be wondering why I went into the master power switch before going into the emergency on off switch. And the reason I did that was this switch has a little LED on it that shows me when there is power turned on. So if we do the emergency stop and the master power is still on, it's going to stay lit and it's going to let me know that I need to turn off the master power. So from the master power switch, we go into the emergency stop and then the two spade terminals connect to the emergency stop switch going to the SCR. One thing that I discovered when I was putting this together is this has two separate switches that can be removed by turning that screw. And one is normally open and the other is normally closed. And that doesn't work the way I have this wired. I have this set up to kill both legs, both the hot and the neutral, when you hit emergency stop. But if one is opening and one is closing when you hit the button, that's not going to work. So thankfully, when I ordered these, I ended up getting two of them, and I was able to remove the normally closed switch from the other one and install it here. I have since ordered some extra normally closed switches so that I can make use of that other emergency stop switch, and I have linked both this emergency stop assembly and the replacement switches in the description. So we have our two potentiometers. As I said, they go on the skinny wire to the SCR. I've got the stepper motor controller. It's really very straightforward and very simple. So here it is installed. Master power. We have direction. Now I have the safety of an emergency stop switch. And like I said, the way I have it wired, that light is still lit when the emergency stop is on. We have speed control. And over here we have our autonomous power feed controls. If you're wondering what's with the tape on the top, that's because there's a half inch hole because this box was repurposed from a different project. And I will be getting a half inch plug for that, but also this box is a little small. I realized after I got it all put together that, you know, when I go to turn this, I'm a little close to the emergency stop switch and my controls for the power feed are actually very close as well. I found on Amazon a slightly bigger box than this. This box and the bigger box will be linked below. 
And I'm thinking I will likely purchase the bigger box and move these components to that box. But for now, this is a success. I have a nice heavy duty direction switch for when I'm threading. I have the emergency stop, which just adds a little safety to all of this. And it's a significant improvement over what was there originally. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.